Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got really just more of a fun overview video to share with you guys. These are all Chavez Redemption 229. Some of them have the kickstop flippers and one of them, actually just one of them, has the thumb stud. Um, but I was uh, sent two newer ones uh, directly from Chavez. This one right here with the beautiful micarta inlays and the Tanto blade. And then I have this full titanium bronze one here um, that has a chisel grind, which is really cool. Um, I have reviewed this knife. This is absolutely a knife that you'll find on my favorite knives of all time playlist. I have been a huge fan of the Chavez Redemption ever since I, I uh, saw the original gigantic custom uh, on Jim Skelton's channel years ago. Um, I uh, owned the American 228 Midtech, and as soon as I could get my hands on uh, the new 229, I did, I think back in 2019. And I've built up a little bit of a collection here. This is a really, really cool knife, and I really just want to show off the collection and talk about the two new ones I got uh, and just sort of update everybody on my thoughts. Spoiler alert, I still absolutely love this knife. I think it's really cool. If you like how it looks, this is a great one to pick up and I'm going to link it right down below in the description so that you guys can check it out if you want to. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. We're going to move these off just for a moment, uh, moment, and I'm going to use this one here to get some quick specs and size comparisons, and then really we're going to move on into what will be a short video. The overall length for anybody who is not familiar with this knife is eight inches. Now, eight inches to some people can seem, you know, like a, a smaller pocket knife, especially if you define XL or large knives as much, much larger. This knife is big. At eight inches, it is not a dainty knife. Nothing about this knife feels small. It feels heavy duty, thick, powerful, right? Not Medford thick or anything like that, but it definitely feels like a larger knife. So don't let that eight inch measurement fool you. That is a big eight inches. I'm sure there's gonna be tons of jokes in the comment section. Go ahead, let me hear your best eight inches is small joke. Uh, three and a half inches of blade, and 3.45 inches of cutting edge, unless unless we're looking at one of the uh, thumb stud versions, which has a much larger sharpening choil, only about 3.3 inches of cutting edge. Some size comparisons real quick. Any custom skills you find in this section can be found down in the description under Original Goat and others up against the AD10 and the AD20.5. It is not quite as long as the 8010 and not quite as robust, but if you get one of these in hand, a lot of people, you know, if you own this knife, let people know down in the comments. It just feels big and powerful and heavy, right? In a good way, in a satisfying way. Not necessarily in a cumbersome way, but just for people who like stuff like that, it's a very satisfying knife to hold, right? Up against the Spyderco PM2, and the Spyderco Para 3, about the same overall length as the Spyderco PM2, perhaps a hair shorter maybe, uh, definitely larger than the Para 3. And then finally up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Hogue Deca, which is, there it is, it's on the other side of the table today. All right. Um, so, uh, you got measurement size comparisons, and action, truthfully, it comes down to your preference between what's available right now, which is the flipper option, which is actually a kickstop flipper, right? And wow, that is <laughs> one of the best, uh, I just did a video of like my favorite flippers in my collection. And I excluded knives that were either ridiculously expensive, and I'm talking about multiple thousands, and or impossible to get your hands on. So as far as, and this is still an expensive knife, right? There's no doubt about it. I mean, these hover around 400 bucks. But when we're talking about availability, right? Whether or not you are willing to pay or can pay for a knife that costs $400, that's one thing. But in terms of the ability to acquire it, it is factually a knife that is acquirable. Of knives in that 
same territory, uh, you know, able to be acquired. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorite flippers on the market. This kickstop flipper, which is actually separate from the blade. It is not attached to the blade. When you flip it, it actually tucks away right here. Uh, and the blade rockets out into the open position and does not come back out till we wrap the blade around and it connects. There we go. Something about this being detached from the blade makes it feel wonderful. And I know that all that'll be echoed down in the comments. As an owner of uh, four of these, I can tell you very confidently that all of the kickstop versions of this knife feel exactly the same. The detent is tuned perfectly for this type of uh, action and deployment. It's wonderful. Now, the thumb stud version is fine. It's all right. I enjoy it. Some people prefer thumb studs over uh, the kickstop flippers. Um, I just prefer, with this knife, the kickstop flipper version. You'll probably notice that this one seems really smooth. This one's been around for a bit. This has broken in completely. I have flipped this knife I don't know how many hundreds of times, but these will all inevitably end up exactly the same way. You might also notice that one of these has a different pocket clip, right? Skull clip, skull clip. Now these knives are famous for the skull clip, dating back to the original. That's kind of, I would argue, what made these famous alongside, you know, the general shape. One of these does not. If you buy one of these now, they come with both clips, right? So usually when I show these knives, People say, oh, yeah, I don't like that skull clip. Ah. You get both clips, right? So you can clip the non-skull clip on there. It looks like this, right? Just much more of a plain milled clip. Or you can keep have the skull clip, right? Um, so it's, it's entirely up to you. Truthfully, they both pocket almost identical. I mean, the bills of the clips are slightly different, right? The, uh, in fact, actually, the length is slightly different. The, the non-skull clips are a little bit longer and a little bit more narrow, not much, it's hardly gonna make a difference. Um, I uh, honestly enjoy the skull clip on these knives. Um, I just have this one on here because I knew that, you know, in the future I would really, uh, you know, uh, there would be a benefit to me being able to show uh, that there would, you know, that the clips were a little bit different. So uh, I think it's nice that you get both, and I think that's great. Uh, I cannot tell a difference at all between any of these. These are all exactly the same. Like in terms of manufacturing consistency, they're all exactly the same. To my knowledge, these are all still being built by Riot uh, in China. And if you're familiar with Riot, you know that they're one of the best OEMs on earth when it comes to production knives. Yes, that's true. People who haven't been around in the knife world for the last decade and assume that Chinese manufacturing is synonymous with poor quality. It is not, especially with companies like Riot, Wee Knives, Best Deck, Max Ace, Kun Wu, etc. The list goes on. But Riot is definitely one of the best, and it shows through here. I really, in particular, now the chisel grind thing is nice. We don't see this nearly as often if you don't know what I'm talking about. A normal, you know, a normal grind, I guess. Uh, would be like a conventional V grind, meaning it comes to the same, it's, it's symmetrical on each side, right? We have the compound hollow to flat here. Uh, on the drop point versions, it's actually the same, except it's not a tanto, right? But it's the same on both sides. On a, uh, on a chisel grind, it is completely flat over here and straight. And then the uh, convex, I'm sorry, the concave grind and the flat grind are only on one side. Right, so it is, as you can see here, it is completely flat. Now this makes it a little thinner here. Some people prefer this type of grind. A lot of people don't because it is not symmetrical. It also makes it look like in this position that the blade is not centered when in fact it absolutely is. It's just the grind making it look that way. This is an option to you. Uh, so if you're, if you're somebody who likes a, uh, you know, a, uh, a chisel grind, then you, you, you know, see benefit to it, whether that's theoretical or it's based on actual use, it's entirely up to you. Personally, I don't mind the chisel grind, but I like the conventional V grind. I think out of all of these, I mean, my, my special one in Damascus steel, yeah, that's really great. Uh, this was uh, something that I picked up from Crane's Cutlery a while back. We have the Damascus steel blade and the Mocha tie clip and backspacer. That's really cool. I like my regular ones. These are my two uh, main users, the kickstop version and the thumb stud version. Really great. I think my favorite of the bunch, honestly, is this black 
and my Carta one. I'll tell you why. This is one of the ones that they just sent me. Um, I love uh, I love frame locks, but what I don't love about them is them being exposed, right? The whole lock is just exposed. So if I ever do squeeze on the knife, I can feel that frame lock pushing into the tang of the blade. And a lot of people would quickly point out that's a benefit because you're holding the lock in place. Okay, but you're also prematurely wearing the lock face, right? Now, these all have lock bar inserts, so if they wear down over time, theoretically, you just pop the chip out and put another one back in. Great. I like the idea of just letting the proper geometry do the work and being able to squeeze on the knife as much as I want without prematurely wearing down that lock face, right? In my mind, and this may or may not be true, I'm increasing the life of that lock by five to 10 years by not mashing it into the tang of the blade. I love knives that have overlays over the frame lock. And yeah, a little bit of it is still exposed. This is gonna create a little bit of a back and forth in the comment section because different people have different opinions and different you know, amounts of experience with this stuff. So if I really squeezed hard on this, I would affect it a little bit, but not quite as much as one where the entire frame lock is exposed. All right, I like that a lot. And it acts as a secondary over travel, not that that's necessary because it does have the steel lock bar insert also doubles as the over travel. The other thing I like about it is just generally speaking how it looks on this knife and the implications of what they can do with it. This adds a little bit of potential for contrast, right? Um, it's cool to be able to get titanium or black or bronze or, right? But when you have an inlay, you can do different colors of micarta. You can do different colors of... Uh, carbon fiber, right? The different fat carbons and all the nebula, whatever, right? If they want to. A Riyadh is no stranger to those um, materials. They could also do an inlay of titanium and anodize it differently, which is really cool. Uh, this is the type of knife that, honestly, I clearly don't mind having multiples of, um, but this is the type of knife that people collect. So, uh, number one, I love the evolution of this knife over time. I mean, I... It's been a long time, like since this originally came out. This knife is still popular all these years later. The evolution of this knife has been fantastic. The addition of the kickstop flipper just makes it such a joy. On top of that, it really is a great user. It seems like such a clunky, bulky knife, but it's actually great. I mean, on the downside, it's a little big and a little heavy for some people, but I have thoroughly enjoyed the time that I have spent carrying and using these various knives, right? I mean, it, okay, I don't use the damn steel one. I'll give you that. But the rest of these, yeah, it's really been great, right? Ergonomically, they're very comfortable with it, say, for a couple of sharp spots. And it's really just back here. Most of the time, you stay in here, you're honestly good to go. It is a lot more comfortable than you might think. Um, but uh, I love the addition of the kickstop flipper. I love the fact that they have included the other pocket clip for people who simply just don't want the skull on their knife. I think that's fine carry uh, profile, all of that's great. The detent's great. Everything is just great. This is one of those knives that people kind of have in their mind for a really long time. And they think, do I really want that? That's an expensive knife, but it's so cool. And I, you know, the, the whole, the history of this knife and people talked about it, it's real popular, right? And then they build it up and build it up and they eventually buy it. And most of the time they're really, really satisfied with it. And for good reason, right? If you're that person, go ahead and buy it. You're going to like it. It's going to make you happy, right? Find the version that you want. But to the company behind this, Chavez Knives, I like where you're going with this. I really hope you expand on the idea with the inlays because I think the position of the inlays is good. I like the idea of contrast, right? It would be really, really cool to get red micarta in here on black. Oh my goodness, are you serious? That'd be awesome. Do some titanium and then texture the titanium and make it a different color. That would be awesome. I know Riot can do that. I know it's gonna cost a little bit more money, but again, I know people you know, would enjoy it. I also love the idea of anodizing the backspacer a little bit differently, right? Or making the backspacer out of a uh, different material to match the inlays. I think that would be awesome. There's a bunch of uh, stuff that you can do with this. And it's usually the reason that I say, you know, okay, cool, cool knife profile. Let's do something different with the handles, right? That's what I said about this knife. And uh, while they did have a couple of options, I think there were a couple of special editions. I haven't seen anything like this yet. So the fact that we now have a version of it that's chisel ground and coated, right? And we have a version with inlays uh, makes me think that they're open to that. And um, I think that that uh, would be pretty cool. 
Um, it would be a reason for people who maybe like the profile but were looking for something a little more spicy to pick up their very first one. And I think it also might be a good reason for people who already own these knives to pick up another one. Um, but uh, I have I really enjoy this. I think it's cool. It looks awesome. It still feels like the 228 that I remember uh, from a long time ago. It's just, you know, it's the 229. I think you have the right thickness. I know the old 228, I think, was a little thicker. I think that was about 190 thousandths. This one's like maybe 165. The original custom, I believe, was a quarter inch thick. Obviously, that was a little bit too big. Um, but I think this is right. It really feels good. And of all the other Chavez models, right, the Liberation, the, the Street, they also make a G10 version of this, right? Um, this is my favorite by a long shot. If you want my opinion on which of the Chavez knives to pick up, I have handled, I think, most of them. I think you'll find most of them on this channel. Perhaps there are versions of, of these knives that I, you know, or of this series that I haven't actually handled yet. But truthfully... Uh, the 229 is my favorite. It really feels like I'm getting the full Chavez experience with this knife. And I think, uh, while the Tanto looks awesome and definitely suits the whole aggressive uh, appearance, I think the draw point is what's going to make people the most happy because you have a, cont a continuous curvature here and that's going to, it's going to make it easier to maintain a you know, uh, uh, an aesthetically pleasing cutting bevel over time, especially if you're like me and you're not a master sharpener. But um, I'm just really happy with these. Uh, I think they look awesome and I think they're on the right path. Uh, there's not really much that I would change at this point. I mean, my thoughts remain essentially the same. I would just like to see more options. Again, for real, guys, a Bring a, a <laughs> red micarta inlay onto that would be so sick like the burgundy micarta oh i would love that but uh if not you know continue on the same path and again to people who have looked at these and considered and are just not quite sure go for it you'll be happy find the one you want and pick it up they're great knives that's going to be pretty much it. Like I said, it wasn't really a review, just kind of an updated, um, you know, thoughts on a knife that I have legitimately loved for such a long time now. So thanks again to Chavez Knives for sending in these samples for me to uh, share with everybody. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have Lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.